Welcome to Music Tech Explain the Visual Approach. My name is Edgar Rothermich, author of the best-selling book series Graphically Enhanced Manuals. In this video, I will give a quick overview of my new free book about the video conferencing app Zoom and especially how to use it with audio applications and DAWs. Okay, this is the book Zoom US, how it works especially with DAWs and audio collaboration. It is a 75 pages PDF file available as a free download from my website musictechexplained.com. If you prefer a printed book, it is also available on Amazon, but Amazon won't give it away for free. There are more than enough Zoom tutorial videos on YouTube and maybe from the IT department from a university or company, but most of them only provide basic instructions about Zoom and how to quickly get you up and running with your Zoom meetings. Usually, they don't explain the underlying concepts. This creates a problem. Many users have their system up and running very quickly, but often struggle with the details or unexpected surprises. In this book, I will provide more detailed explanations of the main concepts with diagrams and graphics, so the user, host or participant can really understand and utilize the power of Zoom with their great features. I will show in this video just a few of the important diagrams of the book to emphasize on various aspects that I dive into. Please keep in mind that I use Mac OS 10.14.6. Your screen and the available settings might be different if you are on a different version or different OS. The first and most important aspect about the Zoom video conferencing service is that it has two main components. The Zoom website also referred as the Zoom web portal, and the second one, the Zoom application, also referred to as the Zoom client. The reason why this is so important is the fact that you have to deal with two different sets of preferences. Some settings are configured on the web browser when you signed in to your Zoom account. These are different collection from the preferences settings that are available in the Zoom application. On top of that, there is an interaction between those two. For example, some settings are only available in the Zoom app when they are enabled in the web portal first. What's even more confusing is that some configurations in the settings will only be active when you are signed into your account on the Zoom app. This happens, for example, when you enable the stereo sound, which is not enabled by default or even visible. Here are the two most important settings you have to configure when you are using any music in your meetings. You have to enable stereo and you have to disable the speech compression algorithm that ruins your music signal by applying speech optimized algorithms. If you ever listen to music on your phone while on hold, then you know what I mean. These two settings have to be first enabled on the Zoom website when you signed into your Zoom account. Remember, these settings are configured on the Zoom web portal. They are different settings from the settings you configure in the Zoom app. Only if you have selected these settings in the web portal, you will see the actual checkboxes in the settings of the Zoom app, where you conduct your meetings. Turning off the speech algorithm is actually a three-step procedure. First, you have to enable it in the web portal settings. Then you will see the checkbox in the Zoom app settings on the advanced page and when you enable that you will see the button on the actual Zoom meeting window in the upper left corner to toggle the original sound on and off. And with original sound it means no speech algorithm is applied. Zoom uses two important terms, computer audio and computer sound. Pay attention to those in order to understand what is really happening regarding the audio signal that is rerouted inside your computer and sent to all meeting participants. Zoom uses the term computer audio to distinguish it to the audio from your cell phone. It just means that the Zoom meeting uses the audio signal of your computer as the input, your microphone, and the output, your speaker or headphones. With the term computer sound, Zoom refers to your system audio on your computer. As you can see on the diagram that I explain in details in my book, computer sound is the audio signal that is coming from all your audio applications on your computer. For example, when you play back a YouTube video, iTunes or Spotify. 
If you want to play back audio from your DIW, like Pro Tools, Logic or Ableton, there are a few extra steps that you have to pay attention to. All explained and illustrated in my book. Another aspect I focus on in the book is screen sharing, with a lot of details about the slightly confusing interface and some helpful workflow tips. Especially pay attention to the zoom control, when you see it and when you don't see it. For example, the setting Always Show Meeting Controls can be overwritten with another setting, so it will disappear even if you have Always Show enabled. In addition to sharing the screen, Zoom also provides the option that any participant can use their mouse and keyboard to control the currently shared screen in the meeting. I show these really powerful features that come in handy in any online class or collaboration situation. Keep in mind that the host always has complete control who gets privileges to share or remote control. You can even have multiple participants share their screen at the same time and everybody can pick from a dynamic pop-up menu which screen to display on their computer. Many of these powerful features are often hidden and hard to discover, let alone figure out how they work. I show all those dynamic pop-up menus you have to pay attention to in order to use those features. The participants panel and chat panel are something that most users might be already familiar with. But again, there are quite a few hidden features I explain, so you can incorporate them in your Zoom workflow as a host and also a meeting participant. For example, use non-verbal feedback icons in the participants panel that you can enable in the web portal settings. As a host, your icons will show the total number of any votes for each icon. Very easy to conduct some quick surveys. And of course, you can use the chat panel to upload files that every participant can grab or open directly from the chat panel. Each file can be up to 512 megabyte. The share screen feature has one powerful option. Not only can you share the screen of your computer, but instead you can share the screen of your iPhone or iPad via AirPlay or USB connection. Not only can you demonstrate any iOS app in your meetings, you can use the camera of your iPhone or iPad as a live camera feed, in addition to your main video feed showing you as an instructor. For any lab-oriented classroom settings, for example music instructions, chemistry, physics, this becomes very powerful. One major limitation in Zoom is that it only operates with a sample rate of 48 kHz. For applications that use the system audio, like Safari or iTunes, this is not a problem. But any DAW session with a sample rate other than 48K, this will not work, unless you use a special advanced routing with using aggregate devices in conjunction with Soundflower or Loopback. As I mentioned, these are advanced configurations that are challenging and sometimes a bit of a hit and miss situation. I provide a lot of signal flow diagrams and graphics with step-by-step -step instructions to point you in the right direction. Please be aware that there are some news articles about Zoom and security risks. Please make sure to read the latest updates because some of the vulnerabilities might have been fixed in the meantime. However, if Zoom was really selling your data to Facebook, that would be a really dick move, at least from a public relations point of view. Hopefully they don't do that anymore. At least if you ever use the blue sign in with your Facebook account button on any app that is not Facebook, please don't. I know it is convenient, but please don't. Log in with your Google account, maybe. But why not practice common sense security hygiene and use separate sign in credentials for each service and website that needs an account login. To put it into a current context, whenever you click on a button sign in with your Facebook account, think of it as if it is COVID-19 infected, with the difference that even washing your hands for 20 seconds after clicking that button, you still stay infected. So, have fun using Zoom in your socially distant environment and hopefully my free book can help you with that in your school, at your job or with any of your video conferencing activities.